So recently I've been looking for a good game to play while I'm in Champion Select or just regularly watching a movie or a series. Yeah, I'm multitask, just sitting and watching is just too plain boring. The only way you wouldn't have heard of Celeste by now is if you are living under a rock and even then I'd have my doubts. The game costs 20 euros on Steam and it's been getting great reviews and comments from all sources. Why is that though? Well, its simplicity is what really takes the cake for me. You basically have three action moves you can take. A jump, a grip slash climb, and a dash. There's limitations to all these, which you come aware of in just the first five minutes of gameplay. And that's another big one for me. The game doesn't prevent you from starting to play with endless dialogue, cutscenes and tutorials. You are literally just pushed into an environment and have to learn to deal with it probably by dying a lot. What you're watching right now is my first 20 minutes into this game, so you can see how I'm still adjusting to the controls. And about those. Honestly, I was playing with just my keyboard and it felt like the keys were poorly chosen. C for jumping, Z for gripping and X for dashing. I found myself trying to jump with Z, dashing with C and other mixtures of the sort without even noticing it. It might just be me here as I usually prefer to play these games with a controller, but I felt like just trying them the original way that the creator intended Intended. Apart from that, the design from each level really intrigued me by how different they were able to make it feel traversing from one board to another. It's amazing how many different courses of action you can take to get to the end of the level. But what really starts to grip you in, at least in my case, is the added challenge of getting all the strawberries. They're usually located in somewhat complicated locations and before you even attempt to get them, you just blankly look at your screen for a while without moving, planning a course of action, which to me makes it feel even better when you finally get it. There's another kind of strawberries that are even harder to get, but I haven't gotten to those either, so I won't talk about them. Something a lot of people have been talking about is its level of difficulty. It's not Dark Souls level, but it has been compared a lot to the difficulty in Cuphead. I have to be honest with you, first of all, I only played the first 20 minutes of the game so far, since that's basically the point when I decide whether I will continue to play the game for fun or just because I spent 20 euros for it. And so far, you can bet it's gonna be the first option. Second, I haven't played Dark Souls since it's not particularly my style of game and I haven't played Cuphead either since I felt like it emphasized too much on the boss battles and dodging for four straight minutes until the monster finally crumbles. And to me that gets pretty old pretty quick. The reason why I decided to play Celeste is actually simple. There's two aspects to every single game that really hooked me right from the start, even without looking at proper gameplay, and that is style and soundtrack. I'm a huge fan of the pixel art games and usually for the simple reason that they tend to be accompanied by great soundtrack. Two of my favorite all-time games that I still want to feature in this channel in the future are Stardew Valley and Undertale. I had already played and really enjoyed a pixel art RPG like Undertale, not only because of its unique approach to fighting and its soundtrack, but also because of how involved you actually get with all the characters. I had also already played and really enjoyed a pixel art simulation game like Stardew Valley, not only because of its unique approach to farming simulation and its soundtrack, but also because of how involved you actually get with all of its characters. And thus far, I am pretty Pretty sure I'm going to add Celeste to this list as my reference for THE pixel art platformer where I will surely be able to talk about its unique approach to level design in game mechanics, its magnificent soundtrack and also for how involved you will get with all the characters, even right from the start with just a small conversation with an old lady. But if you find this might be a little bit too difficult for you just by looking at the sheer amount of times I've already died in this first few levels of the game, then be sure to know that I am somewhat of a noob when it comes to games that require skill and my learning 
learning curve is pretty steep. But also, you have the option to activate assist mode, which can help you in whatever you need to progress with the game by slowing down speed, allowing you to use infinite dashes and also infinite stamina along with possibly complete invincibility. You might think that this destroys the purpose of the game, but it might help a lot of people out that just want to delve deep into the game's story and enjoy a good while. So simply let it be off and don't bother with it if it doesn't suit your playstyle and you'd rather die 3000 times instead. The last reason why I believe Celeste will still be relevant a year from now is because of its speedrunning potential. Right now, the record for beating it completely seems to be 47 minutes, but the game has just come out and people are still studying the best routes and courses of action for each level. Also, the fact that you can practice individual levels over and over until you've mastered them makes this an incredible game for speedrunning, even though this type of playing is really not my style. Now obviously I can't guess what you like and what you don't like, so I can't say for sure if Celeste is the game for you specifically, but I can tell you that if you're a fan of pixel art and would like to relax for a while after a hard day of work, chill to some sweet music and just enjoy a simple, effective and challenging game with lots of death but also lots of reward, then Celeste is definitely for you. I'll leave a link in my description for where you can buy the game if you're interested and once you've given it a go, let me know what you think. I will now keep on playing and hopefully the remaining hours left of gameplay that I haven't tried out yet will not change much of what has been said before. Sakaya's out.